Quick medical tip, skin glue. There are a lot of people that come to the ER for cuts or lacerations, that being the medical word, and we stitch or suture them. However, there's some lacerations that don't really necessarily need sutures and they are amenable to gluing. And this is something that if you know the appropriate types of lacerations for doing this and the appropriate types of glue to use, that you may be able to save yourself a trip to the ER and take care of some of this at home. Uh, as always, do this at your own risk, but let's have a look at some of the things that you need to know about this. First is the types of lacerations that are appropriate for gluing. So the wounds need to have minimal tension on them. Faces are great things that we glue faces a lot, especially in kids, because faces have really no tension uh, because the only thing you're gonna have holding that wound edge together is that thin layer of glue on the surface of the wound. There's nothing gonna be down underneath in the wound. So if the wound has a lot of tension, it's, it may come back open. I actually saw a woman that had a laceration on her upper chest. She had large breasts. They had decided to glue it and just the weight of her chest pulled it back open and she had a big scar there. So you need to be careful what you're gluing if there's a lot of tension. Next is it needs to not be bleeding. You need to get all the bleeding stopped before you glue it. And that can typically be done just with direct pressure or some ice may help as well, but get the bleeding stopped. Otherwise you end up with a big gluey, goopy mess and you don't want to get the glue down into the wound itself. Next thing is you don't want to glue wounds that have a high infection risk. So if it's a clean cut, like a you cut it with a clean knife or you bump it on the corner of a cabinet or something like that, less risk for getting infection. But things that are high risk for getting infection, if you cut it with something that's very dirty or especially bite wounds because mouths are dirty things. And if you get a bite wound, the bacteria from the mouth gets down in there and when you glue it, you are effectively sealing all that bacteria in there. It can't get it out, it can fester and makes it much more likely to get infected. So typically when you come to the ER with a bite wound, we don't fix it at all unless maybe it's on the face. A lot of times we just leave it open. So especially don't put any glue on it. Next thing is if it's over a joint because the glue is not flexible. So if say you had a laceration across the, uh, your joint right here on your finger, if you glued it, you're not gonna be able to bend your finger or if you do, you're gonna pop the glue off and the laceration back open because the glue is just not flexible. And then lastly, you don't wanna use it on high friction areas. So you can glue some fingers, like back here might be a good spot, but if you get it on the side of your index finger where you're gonna to be touching it a lot, same with your middle finger, there's gonna be a lot of friction there. The glue is gonna be likely to rub off faster and maybe not be there long enough to provide adequate uh, wound healing. So you need to be careful about that. Next is the type of glue. And the overall class of glue is cyanoacrylate. And this encompasses, encompasses everything from hardware store, crazy glue, super glue, all the way up to the stuff we typically use in the ER, which is something like Dermavon. And I'll put some links to this down below. And without going into all the organic chemistry of this, the chemical composition of the medical grade glue is better. I know a lot of people that use the hardware store, the crazy glue, and do okay with it but uh, I'll get into this in just a second here. The medical stuff is better. Again, without going into all the organic chemistry, the stuff that you wanna look for, the chemical composition is octyl cyanoacrylate. Octyl meaning there's eight carbon uh, molecules on it. There's butyl and there's octyl, butyl for four, octyl for eight. Uh, the octyl is the best because what happens is those longer carbon chains cause it to poly polymerize or harden or dry slower and that causes it to produce less heat. The hardware store ones like super glue, they have a very short carbon chain. They polymerize a lot faster and could actually produce so much heat, you can actually get burns by it. I've never seen anyone coming to the ER from a burn from super gluing themselves, but I've seen case reports of people that have got pretty decent burns from using hardware store super glue. You can use it and in the right cases and in a pinch if that's all you have, um, it's probably okay, but the medical stuff is better and you can get this off the internet. So pick up some of this. It does have a shelf life. You may have to restock it uh, every so often as need be. The way you apply this, here's the dermabond up close. First you wanna get the wound, say you've got a laceration right here. Get it nice and clean, soap and water is fine. Get the bleeding to stop. And then you wanna reapproximate the skin edges. And all you have to do for that is just gentle pressure. It doesn't need to be big, complicated, squeeze it together to death. Just gentle pressure, just to get the wound edges back together. Take the glue here, you can see it's in this little vial here. Obviously take it out of the packaging. You crush the middle of this, you'll be able to feel and hear it crushing and then the glue will start flowing down towards the tip here. Squeeze a little bit and then you can just lay a layer down over the last ratio. You generally just need one layer and then you allow it to dry. A lot of times I'll just hold that little bit of tension on the pressure on the wound until it's a little bit solidified and then you let it dry. You can fan it 
but that won't do anything because it's actually a chemical composition or it's actually a chemical reaction of it drying, not a air drying. So as much as fanning, it makes you feel better and I often do it, it's not gonna dry any faster. You then let it dry just like any other glue would and it will fall off eventually just like any other glue would. If you accidentally get it in places where you shouldn't have it, like you glue your finger together, uh, you can use acetone, you can use Vaseline. I've seen three people that have accidentally put super glue in their eye as a side note ER story. Uh, the one person I thought was a fluke, but then I saw two more people that actually put super glue in their eye thing. It was their eye drop. So tip, don't keep your super glue in the medicine cabinet next to the visine. So in the middle of the night when your eyes are dry and you go to the visine that you actually, oh, oh, my eyes glued together. And you have to come to the ER with your eye glued shut. Word of the wise. But that's it. Uh, skin glue. Check it out. I'll put some links. As always, questions. Post them if you got them. Catch you next time.